Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul with RP1 series in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1 and in this episode we will try to make orbit. Last time we didn't really get around to going horizontal very much, we sort of spun around quite a lot and otherwise went straight up. So this time we'll, we'll go horizontal a little bit more. And uh, just to be clear, I am actually recording the first three episodes of this on the same day. So I have to guess a little bit about what kind of comments you might have made. And so one thing that I'm sure somebody might have mentioned is that the helium thrusters do not have much thrust. Uh, so we are going to go with HTP. I've purchased that. That is an upgrade I purchased. And HTP will give us a little bit more thrust on those thrusters, but I still don't know if it's enough. So that's one anticipated suggestion. And uh, another thing is that the RD100, we now have an upgrade, if I could get to it. Um, we have the RD103 upgrade I purchased. That was 22,000 funds. And so we are now using ethanol 90 instead of ethanol 75, which gives us a little bit more performance. Also, this has a lot more burn time, two minutes and 10 seconds. But we can't really take advantage of that because we are still limited by 20 tons on the pad. And we're right up against that. So at least we don't have a part count limit. That would be really irritating. But yeah, 20 tons on the pad and this is, uh, this is 20 tons, all right. So in order to solve the problem of tanks, right? I mean, we've got this, this tank here, but I c couldn't fit enough fuel in that tank to run this for a sufficient amount of time to get to our limit uh, with launch clamps. The launch clamps are like 0.4 tons. But uh, in order to solve that problem, we have these, which are, of course, identical to that tank because tooling. So one here, one here, and then uh, one here, and one here. We just have to stack them. That's all we can do. And so uh, otherwise, uh, if I tried to make like uh, extra ones of these on the side to make like a heavy version, that wouldn't work so well. A, because we don't have any fuel cross feeding. Uh, well, I guess we do have automatic fuel cross feeding, so it would have worked fine, but they'd be too big anyway uh, and would uh, overstrip the pad limit. So this is what we've got. And it's still XASR is on the center there, though I did do a little minor renovation. Oh, they got ticked. Uh, let's let me pull them out. Um, I rotated them just a tiny little bit so that they point through the center of mass just a little bit better. Just in case one goes out, that'll help maybe, possibly not. We also have four snubatrons. That's why I call these separatrons that I often use to do fuel settling. And I replaced the procedural core with an able, able avionics core because I just trust it more. I, uh, I don't know, it's a little bit heavier than the procedural one, but the procedural one flipped us out twice, so I'm just gonna skip it. Uh, we'll go with the able avionics core and hopefully it'll work better. Who knows? All right, so that's basically the size of it. And we'll see how this goes. 244 days to build it. Rollout costs a whopping 4,265 when the rocket is only 1,652. Uh, I don't know. Rollout costs suck. Anyway, we this is what we've got. So we'll, we'll go with it. Save and build. I should probably queue up the launch pad increase in size. But... I'm a little bit worried about that business. I don't know if we should pick up the first artificial satellite contract. Seems like it would be a reasonable thing to do. But maybe I should just, well, we won't, We don't want an altitude record. And we don't have the sounding rocket payload. Okay, well, hmm. It's gonna be rough if they take all our money away. Yeah, I mean, it's just the build time is such that I don't want to risk it, right? I mean, because we can only have three shots, really, within that time frame. Let's make sure the rocket works first. Delta V-wise, it's fine. It's all the other business about it flipping out. That's the problem. And, of course, engine failures. Even if it works this time, there's no guarantee it'll work the next time because of engine failures. Okay. It's an interesting sort of contraption. 
SAS on, throttle is up, and ignition, and launch. Whoa, it really gets up there, huh? I don't know if I want to trust Smart ASS, but I'll trust Smart ASS. I mean, what can I do, right? Hopefully, it'll not wiggle too much. Uh, it's it's wiggling quite a lot, actually. Um, can you just point at the? Oh, oh no. Okay. Uh, ooh. Okay. I'll just take manual control with SAS. It's fine. It's fine. We're definitely not turning fast enough. Okay, well, it's a bit flippy right now. Okay, fins are working, sort of. Okay, well, it's not going to take that long to do it, but... Let's see. Oh, it's flipping again. Okay, well... This time, let's let the RCS thrusters point prograde first. Can HTP handle it? Let's find out. Oh, we had one of the... The reason why we started spinning out is one of the separatrons failed. You don't expect the separatrons to fail. We need to monitor the error B stability. It looks like we can eventually get control, but if the air bees are don't have fuel stability, then we're going to have a problem. Also, we're a little bit unbalanced because one of the separatrons has fuel in it, huh? That's going to be a big problem. I don't know if the HTP thrusters are strong enough to hold it despite that balance issue. The Separatrons are pretty outboard. So, okay, well it says very stable. Ignition. Uh, it's leaning. It's got to lean worse as the TWR goes up. If I shut one down, will it help? Probably not. Fewer separatrons. That's what we need. Look on the bright side, at least we're not going retrograde. Okay. Well, at least we'll get the last stage its very first chance at firing. That would be nice. We're already going down, but we'll take our time. Let's try and spin up. Is that a sufficient roll rate? Well, let's find out. Ignition. Ah, uh, vapor and feed lines? Oh, it was unstable. Ah, uh, shucks. Such it's excitement. Fewer Sceptrons down here, more up there. Alright. Oh, oh, can we do some science, maybe? Oh, wait, we can. Just above water of an Earth. An Earth? There's another one? Hey, whatever, I'll take it. Well, we know what the problem was. Well, the problems. Let's go back to the VAB and make our fixes. Unfortunately, putting these separatrons up here does cut down on our delta V by about 200 meters per second. And that's because of the dry mass of them. If you take a look at the ISP, this has 230 vacuum compared to the Arabi's 218. So technically, they're more efficient than the Arabi in terms of ISP. Well, actually, XASR is 235, though. But still, uh, they're pretty good compared to our other engines. Unfortunately, it's just the case mass that's really heavy. If you take a look, I think uh, the dry mass, well, the the propellant mass is 8 kilograms, more or less. And the dry mass of it is 8 kilograms, well, 8.7 kilograms. So, yeah, that's a horrible fuel ratio for these Cybertrons. But I guess that's the best they could do back then. I don't know. 
if we had something else. Tiny Tim Booster. I I don't know. That's that's a pretty horrible dry mass too, if you look at it. Take a look, solid fuel, 101 kilograms. 335 kilograms in total, so the dry mass is 235 kilograms. And people wonder why I never use this this thing. It's just horrible. Yeah. Um I've I've been asked that. Why do I want to use a tiny tim? Because it sucks. <laughs> it's just it's a horrible thing. It's more dry mass than fuel. Anyway. So but that's our problem there. So we're cutting down our delta V and that's not good. Maybe I could make a small HTP tank in here and use RCS instead. I don't know if that's gonna be good enough, but it'll be better than this. That doesn't do much better, does it? I haven't even put the thrusters on. Well, let's have less HTP then. I sure hope I can use the thrusters. In theory, if I'm throttled up and there's no engine on, they should work, right? But will they be good enough to settle the fuel down? That I don't know. It's uh, 48 newtons is what we get out of them. And it doesn't show their thrust to weight ratio over here. But we could calculate it. It's not much. <laughs> Let's summarize. It's not much thrust to weight ratio, but it might be enough to settle things down. Okay, well that keeps us to 8,855, which is plausible with the kind of thrust to weight ratio. But if I could get away with just having two launch clamps, Maybe we can fit some more fuel in. Once we get the Explorer core, the whole orbit thing is going to be a lot easier. Oh, and we have to actually... It occurs to me that we can't really increase this by much because you see our cost goes up. 1,956 there. That's the limit if we want to keep it to a lower priced tank. Well, I mean, the other technology is going to take some time to unlock yet. Orbital rocketry is still more than 500 days away. Oh, we now have the material science. So actually, we might have better tanks now. Yeah, tank 3 and tank 3 balloon. But every time you try and upgrade the tanks, it's a totally new, whatchamacallit, tooling. So it's not really a happy situation. Balloon tanks, though, expensive, they say. Complex. Need to be pressurized at all times, yeah. We'll think about those tanks later. And here we go again. Ignition. And launch. I think I'm just gonna go controlling it manually from the start because that's the only way we're going to get horizontal enough quickly enough I think if I don't overdo it now will we be betrayed by one of the separatrons I think I can well just in case we do get betrayed maybe I should start sooner rather than later okay Did we make it? Did we make it? Oh, we lost one. Oh, but they are pointing through the center of mass. So it might be okay. For now. I don't know how it's going to be when the fuel starts running out. Oh, no. Oh, no. I, I knocked it off. Ah, oh, shucks. Come on. Ah, oh, it was so nicely balanced just a second ago. I went too far. Uh, oh, it's because this one. Can we shut that one down? Can we shut all but one, maybe? Which one's the center one, anyway? <laughs> I sh oh, I should have figured that out first. No, this is not good. This stage, though, I am so eager to... to dispense with this stage. Ah, the first one we lost was the center one, anyway. Okay, separation. Well, they're, they're firing. And very stable... very good. Ignition. 
Well, that part worked. If we could skip the second stage, that would be nice. Should set a speed record at the very least. If this engine continues to run. I might just use RCS to sell the fuel down on the second stage as well. Well, certainly the closest we've gotten so far. 5,000 meters per second. Got 10,800 for that, which is pretty darn good. That'll cover our costs. I don't think the HTP can get us past 6,000. Nope. And I don't think we're going to end up over another biome. Yeah, not that far across the Atlantic, unfortunately. Okay, well, I'm just going to abandon this mission. Okay, we are going to try this once again, except this time I replaced the Able Core with the procedural avionics again, give it another chance. I upgraded the HTP thrusters all to 222 newtons. They don't really give 222, it's like 80 newtons or something like that. And put downward facing ones in place of the snubatrons. And so those are the changes. Let's see if they help. This will probably be the last time I try the Aerobe second stage because the um, overall rocketry tech is going to complete in 47 days. And we'll probably just go on to the AJ-10 from that tech level. I know that there's an AJ-10-27 configuration for the Arabies, but I uh, the lower ISP doesn't um, isn't counterbalanced by the higher thrust, so I tend not to use them. Okay, ignition and launch. Okay, shallower please. Okay, out at 200 kilometers. I think the RCS should be fine at controlling it. We don't need to rely on what's going on here right now. All right, yeah, the couple. Yeah, I don't care about vapor and feed lines right now. RCS on. Surface zero. Oh, we've got a fairing sort of caught on there. Well, shucks. That's irregular. Okay, it's going away. This time I, I want like all of the Arabies out. That's the center one, okay. So I can shut them down quickly if necessary and I have them all organized. Okay, very risky. It's always very risky with the Arabies, come on. Let's be honest. Okay, thrusters forward. That was pretty quick stability. And throttle up. And hope for the best. Ignition. Okay, we've got five good ones. Oh, what, uh, which one? Oh no, no, uh, oh shucks. Well, shut that one down, and... Oh, which one was that? Oh, shoot. Have I mentioned I hate Arabies? Did I get the right one? Yes, I did. But it's not gonna stop rolling, is it? Or at least... Uh, well, we'll see. Anyway, we're not getting, gonna get to orbit. The ir irony is that during the live stream when I first tried out RP-1, the Arabies were like flawless. Nary a problem. 
And I noted, well, somebody must really like the Arabies. I guess in the full release they decided to fix that for me or something, I don't know. Maybe it was just luck. Random number generator did its thing. We'll get pretty fast, just not fast enough. Oh, uh, let's just shut it down now. We're already going down. We could try and use all the thruster fuel from down here, but that'll take too long and we're going down anyway. So, separation. Oh, they're still firing. Oh, shoot. Well, that I guess helps for the time being. And ignition. This stage always works, I don't know. <laughs> well, that's not true, but... Man... All right. Oh, we. Uh, I guess there wasn't a six thousand. There's a seven thousand, but it didn't do anything for six thousand. And I don't suppose we're getting to another biome, are we? It's still not enough. Well, I think that'll probably do it for the Araby second stage. All right. Back to Space Center. Okay, well, we now have rocket AJ-5. And it's got a lot less thrust weight ratio on this stage because the AJ-10, well, it, it takes its time, let's face it. And it only burns for a minute and 55 seconds, so it basically uses the same tank size. If you're wondering what's a good tank size to make as a prefab sort of tooling thing, well, that's a pretty good size. Now, that'll uh, serve you well for many different things. And otherwise, I've uh, kept things more or less the same. Just don't tell them that uh, we've expanded it by 40 millimeters. That's as much as I can do without it going... Uh, oh, actually, we could do a little bit more. Without going crazy on the price, because we'd have to retool it. Basically, uh, it was a 1.2 meter tank, and it takes 1.24. All right, so that's the limit there. Still only 1 minute and 14 seconds when this engine can technically do 2.10. But it'll be good. Uh, the AJ-10, let's verify that it actually gimbals. That's sort of important. We do have the RCS though. Yeah, it does gimbal. So, well, we've got 9,000 meters per second, really high thrust to weight ratio initially, and hopefully this will work. But I'm not taking the orbit contract until I see that it does. So there we are. Well, Sputnik happens in three months. That's October 4th that Sputnik happens in 1957. So we could beat it if this rocket works. We won't get credit for it in terms of the contract. Oh, let's pick up the contract. All right, let's pick up the contract. Our official satellite. Fine. give us a maximum amount of time. We could use the money from the contract to buy upgrade points so that we can speed up construction. So that's how I'll justify it. Just watch, the Araby at the upper stage is going to fail, or the AJ-10, which gets, because we don't have any data on it really. Some data from the XASR should carry over maybe. I don't know. Okay, sort of a dawn launch. SAS on, throttle is up, and ignition, and launch. Okay, controlling it manually again. There's the sun peeking out. Okay, we uh, need to reshuffle the stages a bit. Those go down here, and the engine goes up there. All right, RCS on, and decouple, decouple. Okay, it's settled. All right, ignition. And 
our first ignition of an AJ-1037 or early AJ-10. Oh, ah, oh, darn. Uh, loss of thrust. Okay, well, not loss of ISP though. But the burn time will get affected by that. And of course it's just gonna get less happy as time goes on. I uh, better apply the RCS thrust to give it... Um, oh, we lost another half of our thrust, so now we're down to a quarter of our thrust. Great. And it's off. Um, we don't have enough for orbit, but it's a close thing. And no, the RCS wouldn't be enough to compensate for that if we kept going like this. So... Separation. <laughs> Um, insufficient avionics. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, no. Why are these thrusters not firing? They're enabled. Oh. It's not letting me throttle up. Okay. I don't know why it's not letting me throttle up, though. Got electric charge. Yeah, for some reason I can't throttle up. And what if I activate engine? It doesn't do anything because I can't throttle up. That is peculiar. We have communication because otherwise the signal delay would be in red or say loss of connection or something. Now well, we're gonna run out of HTP. Huh. Well that's cheating isn't it? <laughs> why why is this not working? Well, whatever. We're going to have to try again. Now, another option is to use the Vanguard engine. It's, it doesn't have as much thrust, I and mean, you might need two of them. But... And that's because our probe core at the top is not a Vanguard. It's bigger. That's a hefty unlock. Of course, uh, even better would be these RD-107s, but they're for much larger rockets that we can't actually build right now. So, yeah. Those would be overdoing it. Okay, so that's one thing. Another thing is I want to queue up the launch pad upgrade before I spend points on the upgrade points on speeding up our rocket production. Launchpad upgrade 75,000, spend. So, either we're going to make orbit or we're going to be in big trouble, but we sort of knew that anyway. Uh, these upgrade points are so expensive. Two build, uh, point 0.2 build points per second, does that sound good? Triple what we were doing before. So I guess we'd get that rocket done in 80 days. And how long do we have for that contract? Oh, where's the curve alarm clock? Do I not have curb alarm clock? Would have thought I did have it, but uh, I'll have to double check that. Okay. Um, let's see how long here. Well, right, we just picked it up. So 729 days. So we've got a few chances. Yep, 80 day build time, as I surmised. Oh, 84 days, just as I was saying that. It added four days just for the heck of it. So this style has 9,087, and I'm going to queue one more of these. At the very least, we're going to get some more data on the AJ-10 so it doesn't quit on us like that. But let me make sure that we've got the staging right this time. Okay, we're partway through uh, building this AJ-5, but we unlocked basic science, and I wanted to swap out the instruments so we could get some extra science out of it. Um, I'll just, yeah, I'll just swap these two out, I think. We've got a Geiger-Muller counter. That's a little bit heavier than the thermometer and barometer. And this ion mass spectrometer is a different mass. <laughs> um, well, that's annoying. Uh, so, wait, this Geiger counter is just 0.001. 
This one's 0 0.003. Wait a second. Log radiation? This doesn't say log radiation. Contains scientific instruments. Measures gamma rays. But everything that has science has science experiments on it. And this Geiger counter does not. This one from FASA. So this one has not been configured right, which is a shame because it's lighter. Uh, this one has the log radiation, so I guess we're going to have to use this. And the mass spectrometer, I guess it'll have to be put next to something else so that uh, we have some balance. Whoa, that's awkward though. I hope this one's not too big. It's expensive though. This Geiger Mule counter is 100 and this is 250. Just to give context, that's $250,000 in, in $1960, and it'd be $2 million today, according to the rules of RP uh, of Realism Overhaul and RP0. And then the Skyger Mueller counter would be $100,000 in 1960 and $800,000 today. Serious stuff. I mean, it's a big leap from our barometer and thermometer, huh? Oh well, this is going to add extra build time. But more importantly, it's sort of imbalanced right now. And even if I add something with 0 0.001, it's going to be a little bit imbalanced. I'll toss on the thermometer, I suppose. But it's a bit of a risk. I'll keep the other one that we're building, the other uh, AJ5, without that business. We'll just have the regular instruments on that one, just in case these cause a problem. We can edit that later, though. Uh, this is going to take 15 extra days, thanks to those. Very expensive sort of instruments. Well, we're not unlocking very much tech anymore. It's going to be a problem. That's why I was so eager to slap some extra science on the next rocket, because you just don't have anything to unlock now. Oh, Bill Kerman has retired, probably for the best. And Bob Kerman retired. What they were doing being astronauts before we even had rockets is beyond me. Okay, throttle up, SAS on, and ignition. And launch. Oh, the main engine died. Oh, shucks. Well, there's no solution for that, unfortunately. Mm, well. RCS. No, no, it's not going to work. It's all gone. Well, what can I say? Test flight. Can we recover you now? I just want the nose cone back. It's all we're gonna get back. Oh, forget it. I, I'm not gonna wait for the nose cone. Abandoned mission. Well, that sucks. And the RD-103 was doing so well. Well, it has happened. Jeb has retired. Let's see. Throttle up. SAS is on. Can we do some science here? Uh, nothing. It's not worth anything. Well, gotta check. All right. Ignition. And launch. Okay, passing through all the queues. Okay, nominal burn for the stage this time. All right, RCS on. A little coast up a little bit. Okay, separation. We have a little bit less HTP this time. Let's point at the horizon. Verify the engine is stable and ignition. Wow, 
Well, let's see if it works this time. We can do some science now. Temperature scan we've done, telemetry, cosmic ray science, 4.5. But it looks like mass spectrom spectrometry only works on recovery, so that wasn't worth carrying. Five science added, upper atmosphere, but we are now in space. Temperature scan, telemetry, cosmic ray science in space, 6.8 science. That should cover uh, science uh, technology. Yep. Okay, throttle off. Rotation's good. Separation. Well, that was weird. Um, it's not doing it. It's not throttling up. Right when I stage, it stops throttling up. And we can't ignite this engine. I'm gonna quickly go to tracking station and come back to it and see if that helps. 22 seconds. Well, maybe that's it. Let's just go to it. Nope, this is the wrong thing. Wrong thing. Right thing. Um. Very stable. Ah, now we can ignite. Oh, stabilize please. Oh, shoot. We're not very stable. Ah, oh, man. So close. Now, is it a procedural avionics issue? Well, I'm gonna build another one with the able core. Can we get to another biome? Nope, no, we're just gonna go into the water. And all of that is done. Okay. Back to Space Center. Okay, I did queue up another AJ, uh, Rocket AJ-5, but now I've got the double Vanguard. Two Vanguard engines at the bottom. 16 tons, a mere 16 tons, two minute burn time because of the way the whole tankage situation works with the tooling. Uh, we've got this tank here, which is not part of that tank there because this is actually more or less a duplicate of that tank. And um, we've got some sounding rocket payload. That's good. Hopefully we can get a contract for that. We've got 20 units of that. And still we have 9,327 meters per second of Delta V, 1.58 thrust weight ratio at sea level. Um, if we wanted to get some more Delta V, of course we could dump, you know, not have the sounding rocket uh, payload and then we get another hundred or so. We'll see how it all works out. But uh, yeah, we'll queue this up as well. It's a little bit more expensive and takes longer to build. And of course we have not tested the Vanguard engines before, so that's another problem, along with what happened with the previous rocket. But yeah, let's see. We'll put this on the list. Okay, this is strange. Suddenly I can't click on any buildings. I wanted to check out how much longer I have on the contracts, but the building icons don't show up. I think maybe I'll wrap up the episode here. We've uh, tried for orbit and failed a few times, and we've got two contenders coming up here, and I'll leave it as a point of suspense. Uh, which one or whether either one will actually make it to orbit in the next episode. Um, we do have some technology though actually I should probably queue up but I can't click on the R&D building. So we'll wait on that until the next episode as well. On that note thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this video if you did enjoy this video please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.